Telgro M3 reported their headline earnings ticking up by 282 percent to 65.4 million rand for the full year. The company also has a construction project in the pipeline of 8 billion rand. Uh, ben uh, Pierre Marhaber, uh, the CEO of Calgro, now joins us uh, in studio for a look at the numbers, fantastic numbers that are coming through. Not only have you moved from the Altex, but you've gone to the main board. Uh, we're seeing a lot of defens defensiveness coming through uh, for your company at a time where a lot of construction companies are having a very a different story to tell us. Uh, property development company, and you're playing in the lower end of the market. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what contributed to this immense increase on that headline earnings per share front? I think we started off a low base. We turned the company around last year, started making profit. And what we're currently doing is we're converting a pipeline that's been built over the last three years and we're just converting that in construction now. So you, you build about around 3,000 units uh, per year. That's right. Tell us about the, the gap uh, within the market that you're actually starting to service. I know that your uh, margins have increased from 10 to 13 percent, so you're starting to make a lot of headway within the space that you're playing in. Okay. Just quickly coming, starting with the margins. The margins yeah. increase because we're doing top structures now. Our margins are lower I mean, while you're doing civil infrastructure, and when you go into the top structure, you start doing uh, better margins. Uh, as long as we grow, we'll always do a lot of civils and the margins are lower. Okay, so tell us how much lower they are, fair. No, they're currently up from 10% to yep. about 13%, um, but it, it's still low from our expectation. As soon as we go to st top structure construction only, the margins will go higher. Okay, so how much higher are you expecting? 20%. Then? We're looking at projects at least 20%. Okay, this is pretty much unheard of within sort of the overall construction space when you hear about, you know, 20% margins coming through. When do you expect to target this and, um, you know, how do you plan to ensure that uh, you have a fair mix between public and, uh, and uh, private sector uh, work? I know that you, you're telling me off air that um, government only accounts for around 30% or less than 30% of your overall book. If you look at our exposure, our exposure with the government is for the fully subsidised and social housing component of the market. We're also doing open market rentals, open market sales, and we're doing bulk sales for social housing. So if you look at the whole spread, it's anything under 500,000 rand right down to the giveaway houses. Uh, give us an indication of what is happening within uh, the social spend um, you know, by government. Are we starting to see a significant uptick? Definitely. If you see, um, there's a, the Minister of Housing is publicly questioning the sustainability of the fully subs or the um, housing policy of giving away houses and there's a big drive towards uh, providing social housing. How is this going to impact things going forward? If the government plays, uh, you know, it's about a 30% player within uh, your books. Mm -hmm. um, are you planning to inc increase this and at what level would you start becoming very uncomfortable when you have too much exposure to government? Because we are the landowner, we decided at a very late stage whether we're working for government or we're working for the public sector. If we do bulk sales with government, we'll obviously go and build it and it's a, a nice client to have. If there's no funding available, we go back to the open market and the private sector and we sell to people that can actually afford um, through end user bonds. It sounds like uh, you know um, an overall recipe that is uh, that is completely foolproof. Um, I, I know again I allude to the conversation we we're having off air. You're telling us about uh, buying property, buying land, 2006-2007 uh, period, a very big uh, you know um, at a time where there was just a lot of hype right. around property development and of course the higher LSM market. Tell us about what you're going to what you're going to be doing with this uh, land. Are you just going to be sitting on it for now until things start to recover extensively within the higher LSM mm. uh, region? Because we own our own town planning companies. We buy agriculture land, we take it through the zoning process and get it ready to go to market. Once it's ready to go to market, we decide which market to target on that. So yes, we did buy some properties in the, in the good times, 2006, 2007, seven aimed at the high end of the market and we'll just land bank, we'll just sit on that until the market recovers. You said that you're going to be focusing on growing your pipeline uh, for the next six years. I mean, beyond the next couple of years, are you actually already starting to see a pipeline that has grown uh, that far down the line? Yeah, we've got a, a pipeline currently that will keep us busy for the next six years. Uh, what we've secured to date, um, whether we've purchased the land or land availability agreements, the land that we've secured to date will keep us busy for the next six years. So we start looking at it after that. Being in the property development side, it's a it takes a long time. Yeah. Buying land and taking it through the zoning process until you're ready to install servers and ultimately build the houses, it's a long, a long turnaround time. So we've got to start looking ahead. You operate uh, within the whole of South Africa, big focus coming through on Gauteng. Uh, tell us about the rest of these South African operations and are you planning to expand even further? Yes, we are. We expanded it back in or down to Cape Town um, end of last year. We opened an office down there. It's an operational office currently, contributing towards revenue, doing infrastructure on the Scottsdale project. Uh, once the operations in Cape Town are stabilised, we'll start looking at um, 
another province. We don't want to grow too fast. We're concerned about uncontrolled growth. Okay, so tell us, okay, uncontrolled growth, uh, but given the fact that we, we're starting to see uh, a lot of folks coming through on the construction uh, sector, and it seems that you, your model, your formula is working quite well, are you concerned about more competition down the line? No, not at all. We're quite happy for the competition to come in and do the same thing. It's a new market segment, but I think the more commonplace it becomes in the market, the integrated market, segment or integrated developments, the better for everyone out there. So we don't mind sharing the model at all. Okay, sharing the model, but what about profits? What about margins? If you see more players, margins are naturally going to come down. Not really. If you look at the market out there, we're sitting with a huge market. We're sitting with 700 odd, 700 odd families that will qualify for bonded housing, but there's no stock in the market. Once you acquire the land, you're competing with yourself. Yes, the competitors will buy adjacent pieces of land, compete with you, but I think the market is big enough. 120,000 rand to, to 500,000 rand. I mean, that's literally the, 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 the space that you're playing in right now. Yeah, we're looking at anything under 500,000 rand. Uh, let's also just touch on uh, the fact, and I mentioned this, Jimmy, from the Altex to the main board. Uh, how is this going to change the company's fortunes? I was talking to Nicholas Soror from Sassman a bit earlier, and he was saying that, you know, very under the radar, not a lot of people are doing quite, a, you know, enough research on your company mm. to understand you quite well, but your share price has just shot through the roof. I think our biggest um, problem is that people don't know what we're really doing. They don't yeah. understand the, the model, and there's not a lot of um, information out, out there to say, what are we actually doing? We are a residential developer buying land. Our model is to say we own the land, we work with government rather than for government, and we're flexible enough to, if there's no budget available, go to a market that's got funding available.